Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of alpha canon when it comes to the klingon cardassian War. The information is so sparse that I almost didn't do a video. However, as I continue the Dominion War series, I realized how integral this event was to the war itself. I really couldn't do a video on the Dominion Justice if I first didn't break down these events. Additionally, when it comes to determining when the first real domino was pushed over for the point of no return for the war, I think the most reasonable event to point to would be the klingon cardassian War itself. Now sure, you could point to events that caused the klingon cardassian War, and then the events that caused those events ad infinitum, but I would think it's reasonable to say that this event, this event right here, started the dominoes that would not be able to be stopped until the Dominion War was concluded. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. In 2371, the Battle of the Omerian Nebula would herald the complete destruction of the Obsidian Order. Cardassian Central Command, the ruling body of the Cardassian Union, and the Obsidian Order had always had an antagonistic relationship, but ultimately one did rely on the other. With the Obsidian Order destroyed, the dissident movement within the civilian population would thrive and ultimately overthrow the military dictatorship. The Central Command had long relied on the Obsidian Order to oppress the Cardassian people. Interestingly, while we don't have the complete picture, the context clues that we receive lead me to believe that the civilian government, under the Datapa Council, would have had a much more benign Cardassian Union. It would seem that the aggressive and duplicitous nature of the Cardassians was not necessarily a trait of the race, but more of the government which existed over them. We see that the Datapa Council was more focused on listening to the needs of its people and, even when presented with an advantage against the Klingons during the war, wanted to work towards a negotiated peace. I wonder if the Maquis would have been able to come to some kind of agreement with the Datapa Council if they had given them a chance. It's quite possible that the Cardassians would have ultimately had a social revolution into something that was more akin to the Federation. We'll never know, however, as over a hundred Klingon vessels, at least one-third of the Klingon Defense Force, invaded Cardassian space in an attempt to effectively lightning strike Cardassia, destroying Cardassian forces quickly and installing a Klingon overseer. The Federation Council would condemn this attack and Gowron in response would cut ties with the Klingon's strongest ally. Starfleet would be ordered to do nothing as envoys from the United Federation of Planets would attempt to reopen dialogue with Gowron. This would mean Klingon ships would simply pass by Starfleet vessels and bases unopposed into Cardassian space. Even though ordered not to assist, Starfleet would still help in some small ways. The commander of Deep Space Nine was vital to ensuring the attack by the Klingons was discovered by the Datapa Council, which would allow Cardassian forces to mount a larger defense and resist the Klingon Empire. Though Klingon forces would continue to push further and further into Cardassian territory, even with this resistance. Ultimately, the commander of Deep Space Nine would save the Dadapa Council once he realized the Klingons were on their way to Cardassia and would be there in under 52 hours. This would lead to the first battle of Deep Space Nine, which, by the by, I do have the first battle of Deep Space Nine, so if you're interested in that, take a look in the top right hand corner. During this battle, Starfleet would defend the Dadapa Council from being executed by the forces of the Klingon Empire. Ultimately, Benjamin Sisko, the commander of Deep Space Nine and a Starfleet officer, would persuade Chancellor Galron to stop any meaningful advance into Cardassian territory. At the loss of the First Battle of Deep Space Nine, the Klingons would move to just holding the territory they had gained. Galron would declare victory and move his efforts onto other endeavors. Though, Klingons would continue to move in and out of Cardassian territory, attacking civilian and military targets alike. The war, while stalemated, was still on. The Maquis would assist the Klingons with cloaking technology provided by the Klingons themselves and do their own strikes into Cardassian territory. They were able to completely conquer the demilitarized zone. The infrastructure of the Cardassian Union would continue to crumble under the attacks and stress of the Klingon Empire. Starfleet would assist, of course, in infrastructure and medical aid, but would find themselves being attacked by Klingon task forces or Maquis raids. The Datapa Council wanting to end the struggle was so strong that even when presented with the ability to strike vital Klingon targets, such as when a Klingon bird of prey had been captured with vital information on Klingon locations in the Cardassian border, they would opt to sue for a negotiated peace. The collapse of the Cardassian Union would be all but certain, that is, until Dukat would mediate an agreement between the Cardassian Union and the Dominion to become a member of the Dominion itself. Dominion forces would arrive from the Gamma Quadrant, at least 50 ships at a time, once a week. Within a few days of the first convoy arriving, the klingon cardassian War would be a decisive victory for the Dominion. The Klingons would be driven out of Cardassian space and the Maquis would be completely wiped out. 
These major defeats would force Gowron to reinstate the Kitimur Accords, forging the Federation Klingon Alliance once more and halting the Dominion advance as it would mean a war with both the Federation and the Klingons. The war itself would be significant in its allowing the Dominion to have a foothold within the Alpha Quadrant, without the need of a battle at Deep Space Nine. And honestly, there isn't much more to it than that. As I stated before, it was vital that I talk through the different impacts that the Dominion would have before the war even began. Stay with me as I now move into the Dominion themselves and it'll at least be a two-part video. We'll finally discuss the dominance of the Dominion for most of the Dominion War. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and guys, I'm gonna see you on the next Lore Reloaded.